Welcome into Pressbox Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of Pressbox and PressboxOnline.com. And as you can see, Luke Jackson is with me. We're both down in Sarasota, Florida. And with us is Eric Garfield of the Florida Prospects Report, doing a lot of content for us now. Uh, and we just came from uh, Bradenton, Lacombe Park, where they played the first ever spring breakout game. And we're going to break that down in just a minute, but let me take care of a little business with a question. What company has the expertise in technology to make your home substantially more energy efficient, comfortable, and even virus-free? Well, that would be A.J. Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis at ajmichaels.com. And we're also brought to you, all our Florida reports are brought to you by the new Atman's Deli in Baltimore's Harbor Point. If you're craving that classic New York deli experience, look no further than the new Atman's Deli in Baltimore's Harbor Point. Corned beef piled high, hand-rolled bagels, and something different, a bar. That's right. Atman's has food and drink specials every day. Now open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dine in, grab takeout, or hang at the bar for the next O's game. And we'll be actually able to say that and mean that in about uh, 10, 12 days. Oh. Uh, an authentic taste of Baltimore tradition since 1915. The new Atman's at Harbor Point. Visit Harbor Point or visit atmansdeli.com. Okay, we are here to talk about the spring breakout game. Luke, you and I, though, witnessed the first game, uh, the Orioles' 5-2 to two win over over the Pirates at Lacombe Field, a 3 o'clock affair. Uh, we did a small video before, but to me, the story, again, was where, where are the Orioles going to – how are they going to shave certain people off of this uh, roster – come the time to get it down to 26 Kyle Stowers hit his fourth lefty on lefty home run and he is really decimating the ball right now yeah that was a loud home run and the, the way they're going to shave uh this roster down is by sending some big league hitters down to AAA Norfolk that's what they're going to end up doing yep. uh and that, that's just that's just where they are right now uh but as we always say Stan they're one injury away from that picture being completely changed so they've still got, uh, I want to say, about 10 more days down here. And a lot can happen between now and then. So we'll see. It's a um, it's a good problem to have. I talked to Shane Turner tonight, Ross Grimsley's friend, who works for the Giants. He says, yep, Orioles have a good problem. It's good for the team. It's good for the fan base in a way. Uh, Eric Garfield, though, you know these prospects. Not good for certain ones that have done everything they needed to do to be ready for the big leagues, except being an organization that's flush with so much talent. This is a competitive environment with the Orioles and their prospects. And there are some of them that are going to be sent down that think or, or have convinced themselves that they're not minor league players. So uh, I don't think it's going to stand in the way of their development but it's certainly in their mind going to stand in, in, in the way of their uh, progress for, for 2024. So I, I don't consider it a problem. I consider it a surplus and someone is going to get hurt. The season is long. So yeah. a couple of these guys that are upset in April of 2024, they're going to get over it by, by May or June when, when, when a, a 40 man player can't, can't perform. All right. First of all, Luke, you and I were there. Eric was as well for the spring breakout game. I yep. got to be honest, the most surprising thing to me is when it was 6 o'clock or 10 of 6 and the game had ended, the Oriole game had ended from this afternoon against the Pirates, and the place thinned out, and you and I turned to each other and said, there's really not that much interest in this game locally here in Bradenton, you know, to see these prospects – there is nationally, and social media is going to be all over. Uh, we'll, we'll get into a couple of things they might uh, look at on social media. But I was first and foremost shocked that I would say about 5,000 people came in and paid to get into that ballpark tonight for this game. Yeah, it was a nice crowd, nice environment. 
and uh, it was a good time. Absolutely. Eric, uh, we got to see, um, forget the schemes on holiday uh, combat, you know, that's now 0-2 for holiday and 2-0 for Paul Skeens, but the number one pick from last year's draft, you've already pegged that he'll be at Altoona, which is double A. He really dealt tonight. It was uh, loud, it was quick, and it was uh, dominant. 11 pitches, eight strikes. He hit just about 102 miles an hour, struck out Bradfield, struck out Holiday in what we would consider short order. So, uh, Connor Norby yeah. got his bat on the ball and hit a little grounder to third base. R correct. So, yeah. that 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 was it and that you know you don't that's not really worth mentioning but but it was the first contact he's not had a lot Skeens has not had a lot of innings not a lot of opportunities but in them he has shown his true dominance and his true potential so uh he's a hard guy to beat and uh he'll and be, he really getting... be he only pitched one inning tonight which makes sense uh, but uh, the Pirates ended up winning the ball game. You know, it's right. interesting. Eric made made the point, and you said, Luke, that you've never heard the the glove pop like that. But Eric, you and I were sitting there, and we both mentioned how quiet the ballpark was. It was almost, it was almost at that point in the game because it was the first inning. I think the fans were a little in awe of seeing these stars, and especially how dominant. Skeens was I think some people were just taken back but it was deadly silent that allowed for you to hear the glove pop of uh, the catcher's mid pop a couple thousand pirates fans and Orioles fans combined and none of them are cheering for Jackson none of them are cheering for Skeens so yeah it was a somewhat unique viewing environment but yeah it was quiet so we heard him pop it 101.7 that's going to make a loud sound so he was dominant, and I have a feeling if he pitched another inning, it would have been also very short and efficient. So his development will will change and increase when he can last more than three outs at a time. I've heard you two talking today, and both of you say I very rarely, if ever, would pick, pick a pitcher 1-1, first pick in the draft. I mean, 30 years ago, the Orioles picked Ben McDonald 1-1, um, it doesn't always work out, but both of you individually have said, this is one guy that I might've made an exception for. Yeah. When I saw him at LSU, I thought that he was one of those guys I would make an exception for. And really I, I would not be in love otherwise with taking a pitcher one, one, it's just too risky in terms of the health factor. Uh, and we've seen that time and time again at the top of the draft, not that, uh, taking a hitter is is uh, like a risk free proposition, but I mean, Skeens is a big boy. This is a hoss, <laughs> and this was high octane stuff tonight, and it was really cool to watch. It was my first time seeing him in person, and it was pretty awesome. That was that was the definitely the uh, high point of the uh, day between the two games. I mean, I mean, Grayson Rodriguez, we saw him pitch today. I think it was he was get, yeah, but it was more of a he, getting his work in type of yeah. He was outing. getting, but he got up to like ninety seven. And and I'm not saying he was going max today, right. but that's like five miles an hour difference yeah. this guy yeah. Skeens has. That's pretty amazing, you know. Yeah, and he's get gets great extension. And so the 101, I saw a quote from Jackson Holiday that his 101 apparently looks like 110, which makes oh. sense with how big he is and the extension he gets. And Jackson apparently said after the game that it felt like he was seeing 110. So yeah. that tells you a little bit about. Uh, what Skeens is all about. I, I don't think I would have picked him with the first overall draft pick. I, I like what I see, but I have a feeling I'd like what I saw from Dylan Cruz or uh, Wyatt Langford having their careers instead of Skeens. So pretty good, but I don't think for, for you, you say he's the one that would change your mind. For me, I don't think there is one that that would change my mind, but he's he's on a good track so far. Yeah, but of course, the reason it wouldn't change your mind is because of the injury risk. You know, that's right. what that's really what it is, where a Wyatt Langford is going to play 150. You know, I mean, he'll probably right. have one major injury in his career, but
but he's not going to miss a whole season from one thing like these pitchers are doing now with Tommy John surgery. That is the Uh, reason. Anybody, let me ask you one more question about Skeens. uh, Is where where will he end the season? You say, Eric, that he's going to start at Altoona. The Altoona curve is double A. Could he be in the big leagues come September? Of course he could. He could, you know, pitch great in the minors, have 13 strikeouts per nine innings, have a whip below one. I think the Pirates are one of those teams that they're going to set an actual innings total for him, and they're not going to break that threshold no matter what. Even if they're contending or or near contending, I think they have a very specific plan for him. At college, he was not on, like, a five-day rotation schedule. So they need to get him there and get hit whatever that innings number is. So it, it could be above double A. It, pro- it probably will be. So but you're saying I, in college he pitched like once a week, almost like a Japanese pitcher? Correct. So having him on that five-day schedule, that has to be a priority for them. You know, they yeah. haven't said it publicly, but I'm sure it is. So let's call it 110 innings. You know, wh- wherever it happens, they'll be fine with it. But I don't think that he's going to be pitching in make-or-break type games down the stretch, like I said, if they're contending or near contending. I just don't think it's in their their plan for him. Okay, the Orioles' uh, starter tonight was Cade Povich, who pitched yep. three innings and a uh, little damage against him. Uh, he balked in a run. He, he wasn't incredibly sharp. But uh, overall, Luke, what did you think of him tonight? Well, he had uh, the uh, pretty curveball working, especially as his outing went along. I thought it was good for Cade that he had a pretty bumpy ride in the first inning, but was able to get out of that with only one run. That yeah. was good. Uh, able to get his work in. I think he went three innings, if I'm not mistaken. He did. Uh, but, yeah, I thought he was he at his best for the end and threw us a, a couple of really good curveballs to finish off at-bats in the third inning, I thought. So, um, so far, so good for Cade. Any other pitcher impress you tonight, Eric? Uh, that Trace Bright, he got into trouble, uh, but I thought he overall, he looked pretty impressive. Those were the only two pitchers for the Orioles. I think they both had a similar experience, did not come out of the gate hitting their spots or being efficient. But as they use their arm more and more, their breaking pitches got over and were in the strike zone. A good thing for Bright is that he was mid or high 90s for a certain percentage of his pitches. So three innings for Povich, three innings for for Bright. Really, honestly, for me, The most impressive pitcher in the game was Bubba Chandler, who's never closed out a game or been a a team's last pitcher. He hit 98, got a save, you know, got a save in a 3-1, seven, six and a half inning game. So he was pretty exciting. And after the game, I reminded him the first time I saw him in that stadium, he was the designated hitter. So things have, have changed from the Marauders till now. Hey, Eric, you see these players a lot more. I, well, I, I don't mean to speak for Luke because Luke lives in, in the Bel Air area and sees a lot of Aberdeen games. But I that's the first time I – that's not the first time. I had seen Fabian before, never yep. been that impressed. But I he was playing left field, and in the yep. first inning, he made two incredible throws. He he, he really is the, the total package, and we've discussed it before on, on, on this show. He is a high-level fundamentals player. He's had great teaching, great instruction, great coaching, and he's a natural athlete. So, yeah, the first one of those throws, the runner did did not test him, but you remarked he would have been out. He would have been out by 12 to 18 feet if he tested Fabian from from deep left. Actually, after you left, Braylon Tavera made a couple really nice catches in center field, and one of them included a throw back into shortstop from the warning track, no bounces. Good outfield defense from the Orioles tonight. Yeah, I thought Bradfield looked really good in center yep. field. He had one yep. opportunity. He really does a nice job gliding to the ball. He can really run. He also beat out a uh, bunt uh, for a single, and he was apparently like three six something from home to first, which is that's I mean that's flying. I was going to ask you something about that, Luke. I mean that is going to be a tough play for defense. You know, first of Very all, tough. the one suspicion about him is whether he can hit or not. But if he bunts 40 times a year, 50 times a year, I know it's not the kosher thing to do or the thing we're used to seeing. 
he's almost impossible to throw out if he gets the bunt Correct. down. Well, and, and you're also hoping that because of his speed, infielders have to play uh, not as deep as they would like to play. And then, you know, maybe more ball sneak through, maybe yeah. more of a higher bad bit guy than you would normally think. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Enrique. I, I am guessing that he's going to start at Aberdeen. And if he does, he I'll do quite a bit of him. Yeah. Uh, I'm same with uh, Matthew Etzel, same with uh, Matt Horvath. I'm hoping to see all those guys in Aberdeen and have a much Exciting. better yeah, much better opinion uh, of the those guys uh, in terms of a uh, well informed opinion, I should say. I'm assuming than I have right now because I've only I'm, seen them like one time. I'm I'm assuming that none of us have heard about other breakout games tonight. But do you think I'm overall not. it was a success? Absolutely. I uh, I think that uh, this is something that MLB pushed for and it seemed like it was ga gaining a lot of traction on social media i'm sure that was part of the calculus that you yep. want some buzz for some spring training games and it was probably a little bit of a departure for some of the the orioles players in the game like jacks holiday is fighting for a major league job on opening day and so this is probably maybe took him out of his routine uh but he also got a chance to face a, a paul Skeens type of arm that he's going to face in the major leagues so you know i don't know I was impressed with the idea of it. I was impressed with the execution of it. Logistically, there are some things that need to be fixed and need to be uh, improved going forward. But it's a great idea. Promote an organization's best prospects. Put them on TV where everybody can see it. So I, I have a feeling that they're building the foundation for successful prospect promotion going forward. Really, really exciting. Yeah. Well, you you live and breathe this stuff, and it was it was. I have to admit, it was pretty electric when it started. Good environment. Yeah. Hey, I want to thank the Costas Inn who uh, sponsor all of our stuff, uh, along with uh, Superbook Sports, AJ Michaels, and the new Atman's Deli at Harbor Point. Uh, we appreciate their sponsorship, and we couldn't put on coverage like this without it. It helps uh, pay the bills, so we appreciate that. Uh, that's going to do it for tonight. Um, and you guys will probably both be out of Twin Lakes tomorrow. I think that's the plan, right? I am picking up Luke in about 12 hours, and we're going to watch a lot of minor league practice and baseball in the sun. So here's a reminder. Please bring your sunscreen. Yeah, have some sunscreen, Luke. It's well, going to be. You're saying you told me today when we walked, I'm okay without a hat and everything. I can see your face. You're out there tomorrow for four hours, five hours, something like that in that heat. You should definitely put some sunscreen on, buddy. All I'll right. bring the Gatorade. All right. I like that. I like that All a lot. Right. All right. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, Luke, Ross, and I will be in. So we saw an appearance by Shane Turner tonight. Luke, you didn't see him, but I got to chat with him, Ross Grimsley's buddy. And I will tell you this. He is one of the most impressive baseball people I've ever had because I've talked to him about four times when Ross gets him on our show, and I come away more and more impressed. And it's amazing, Eric. Here's a guy who says, he tells me like five minutes, ten minutes before the game, he says, yeah, I've got the Orioles this year, so I'll probably be in Baltimore a little bit. But he's already, Eric knows him at, at Twin Lakes Park. He's he's getting the skinny on all the prospects, the Orioles. This is a guy who doesn't miss a beat, Shane Turner of the San Francisco Giants. Right. I, I did like meeting him. I didn't like so much to hear that he's eavesdropping on some of my prospect conversations. So when I <laughs> when I see him tomorrow, I'll give him some space. But it was very right. nice to meet him. All right. Hey, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, and we'll talk soon. Ross, well, actually, Ross, Luke, and I will have to be on about like 3 o'clock on Monday, Luke. Right. We can't That's do it like right. five or, or six Or do it on Tuesday, right? Mm, yeah, I think we should do it Monday. Okay. We should do it Monday. All right. Uh, but we'll we'll chat. All right. Hey, guys, thanks. For Eric Garfield, Luke Jackson, I'm Stan the Fan Charles, and uh, Luke and I continue here until uh, Monday. All right. Talk soon, guys. Thanks.